Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark. And before we get started today, I want to remind you to go over and subscribe to Breakthrough Author Magazine. You can find that at www.breakthroughauthormagazine.com. That is a free subscription you're opting into, and it's full of good stuff. We have articles every month about content development, social media, publishing, editing, book development, uh, interviews with authors and how they've done with their books. So there's a little bit of everything for anyone who is writing a book, building an author platform, and promoting. Also, go check us out and follow us. Subscribe on the YouTube channel if you want to see all of these videos. We also have added some training videos. If we, as we've been doing some LinkedIn Live trainings, we have been um, putting those over on uh, YouTube as well. So if you want to find out about author platform building, what you need to bring together, and things like that, go check it out. So today's guest is Ed Troxell, and Ed Troxell is a video coach and online marketing consultant. He helps real estate agents and solopreneurs get organized and guides them towards success using video in their online marketing efforts. He breaks down all the tech, which come on, you guys, the tech is the worst, (laughs) and mindset barriers that hold people back from sharing their greatness and makes it easy for them to do business online. He is a formal Apple Inc. employee And Ed brings a unique skill set to the table from sales, marketing, strategizing systems, and processes, to teaching the importance of showing up on video so that you can stand out as an expert online. So welcome, Ed. Ed, welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I loved your energy the first time we talked, and I know Nina introduced us, who is also a video person, so you probably have a lot in common, just different audiences. Yes, definitely, and thank you so much for having me here. This is great. So you work a lot with real estate agents, which we just had an enormous conversation about real estate agents since I used to be one. I'm actually still a broker in California and an agent in Utah, but I don't sell. I haven't sold in years. Um, So kind of that mentality. But I think a little bit of what we talked about with the real estate agent mentality is sort of that way in the solopreneur world as well. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about that. Solopreneurs. Are you a solopreneur? Yes. Okay. I started out as one. So um, you probably know you get really excited that first day you're off work. Yes. And you're like, oh my God, I work from home. It's amazing. And then you realize all it entails. And by month three or four, you're exhausted. Um, you haven't showered. You're, you haven't shaved. Your dog is looking at you like, dude, take a shower. You stink. You look tired. So this is really important, the video piece, because video is so easy, right? Yes. Oh, so easy. And it's one of the most overlooked or underutilized pieces of uh, marketing uh, that you can use in your business. And it doesn't have to cost you a whole lot either. You know, you're, you're obviously, it's going to cost you your time. And for some, they'll want to increase their resources for it. But what I love about video and where we're at with it and, and what I actually teach is how to use what you have, which is our iPhones, our, if you have an Android, Android, um, but we have our phones and being able to embrace the technology, embrace who we are and be able to show up more as a, our authentic selves online so that we can attract the right people, the right audience, and not just a number of followers that maybe looks good on our profiles, but actually doesn't convert to anything on the business side of things. That is so true. So I want to address authentic because I think, and and this has sort of morphed over the years. It used to be we did these video productions Yes. Where, you know, we went in a studio and, you know, just the, the act of being in a studio, it's very hard to be natural. I remember oh, going, yeah. I'm going to say 2000, end of 2016, early 17, actually it was 17, went to San Diego. I went to a studio and I did three shots and there was a script and I had all this heavy makeup on and I was dressed and I had to, yes. and, and, you know, I'd read the teleprompter and be myself. 
that's not what people are looking for anymore. No. Yeah. And that, that's the beauty of where we're at. I mean, listen, I'm the same way where before I started this business, I did not want to be in front of the camera. I was always the guy behind the camera, but I knew that being out on my own, I had to market myself differently. And I knew that the only way to do that was to step in front of the camera. And for me at the time, it was going live. So I was going live on Periscope and Facebook and, and then all the different ones, you know, Uh, but that is how I got noticed and that's how I stood out. And that's how I built up my confidence and really got comfortable with being myself online so that I didn't have that experience like you just described, because I know that when I do pre-recorded video, that's how it feels where you, you're supposed to be yourself. But like you said, you have all this makeup on, you have, you have a script that you're supposed to read. You're supposed to me- memorize your lines. You're supposed to look at the lights even though they're blinding you, you know, and you're just in this environment that's not comfortable, which you're probably also wearing clothes that aren't comfortable either. And so nothing comes out really natural. It comes out really stiff if you can actually speak. Cause I know that I've frozen on camera with those pre recorded um, events because it just wasn't natural for me. It didn't feel right. Yeah. So Periscope, you guys, I have to yes. tell you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a great example of why you should work with someone like Ed. Periscope, when it was brand new, I tried it. And it was, I think the first thing I ever did live, it was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. So I kind of pulled away after that first one. And I was in this mode where I was thinking about, like, am I ever going to get on there again? And then remember how it used to ping you if somebody you were following came on? So this group of real estate agents, it's so funny, we were talking about real estate agent, they, real estate agents and mortgage brokers, they, they were going to try to do this show and they get on it, and one of the guys talks with his hands and literally they're talking and what knocks the microphone right off the desk, yes. you can hear them all underneath the desk going, where is it? Where is it? You know, F-bombs dropping. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I was a rock star. Yes. <laughs> So, so you guys, I think the point of it is you're always going to be bad the first time, but if you, if you keep at it and you practice, it becomes natural. So is oh, that what you do with people a lot? hundred percent. Yes, exactly. It's really about what I call promoting video positivity. It's really allowing us to get comfortable with being on camera, allowing our corks and our gook goofiness and you know (laughs) you just keep rolling with it right like that's the beauty of it is you get so comfortable with yourself in front of the camera that when things like that happen or like I messed up in my verbiage there or the phone drops or whatever happens you go into this what I call survival mode your brain knows and so it kicks Mm -hmm. into survival mode and it fills in the blanks for you so you get so comfortable with if you mess up that you either don't even notice it or you make fun of it. Like there was one interview that I did where I didn't know it wasn't going to be edited and I messed up during the the call and they're like, just so you know, we're not editing this. And I was like, awesome. Great. So that's a teachable moment. So you get to really include it there and people really enjoy that because it's relatable. They can understand and it makes it a lot easier for them to get the courage to do it themselves because really what's holding us back from showing up on camera. It's not the equipment, it's the mindset. And that's what I work with uh, first is the mindset versus the tech, because that's the biggest barrier that holds so many back from even picking up the equipment to then go on and be on camera. Yeah, and that's so true. You know, um, it, I'm going to equate it to kind of writing a book too. Yes. Sometimes when you write a book and you get your reviews, you're you you look at them and you go, "Oh, that was that was devastating." But one of the things one of my mentors taught me early on is like pull back and just say, "Hmm, I wonder if that person has ever written a whole book." Yeah. Because I think the people who don't do it tend to be more critical. Yep. than the people who, you know what I mean, as an audience, than the people yes. who do do it. Once you do it and you gain that appreciation, and um, I have to tell you, some of the best people who are able to pick up and get comfortable are those that have gone to, like to comedy programs. 
Yeah. I have a lot of girlfriends who've gone through the improv and oh, yes. I can't even imagine getting up and like telling jokes on a stage, but it, they, they all say that it's super helpful and just like being able to make a mistake and pick it up and run. Yes. And you bring up such a great point, you know, tying that into social media, because a lot of us are going to be sharing these videos, sharing our books on social media. And, and that can be challenging for some, because again, we're fearful of getting a negative comment, getting mm -hmm. a negative review. And we have to, like you said, pull back and look at it and take it with a grain of salt and also understand that you got someone to stop what they were doing. They stopped their busy schedule to not only look at your content, but also drop a comment. We don't even care what the comment said. The fact that they did that, congratulate yourself because yes. you got someone's attention and it also signaled to the platform. So for example, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, it signaled to the platform that your content's getting engagement, which therefore tells the platform we need to push this out to more people. So again, it's shifting our mindset around the things that we're fearful of and understanding that while that comment maybe didn't suit your liking, it still was a benefit for you. It still allowed you to learn something and get your content pushed out there to more people, more of the right people. Yeah, and you guys, the platforms now, and correct me if I'm wrong, they give priority uh, algorithms to video. A lot of them do. I know LinkedIn Live, even though LinkedIn Live's in beta, yep. um, they give a lot, they, they put a lot of weight on those videos. Oh yeah, video across the board is your key to success online. It, you know, when we look at statistics, over 82% of all internet traffic this year alone in 2022 is video based. So right there, if you're not creating video content on a regular basis, you're already behind. Doesn't mean you have to stay behind now that you're listening to this and you're starting to take your notes and actually go implement, keyword there, you're gonna implement something. You don't have to do everything, but you gotta implement something then you can start to catch up and then really start getting into the zone. You've got to start where you are. And if your dream is to do that video production work and, and have the, you know, the studio and everything that we talked about earlier, great. But understand that you don't need to start there, work your way up there. And also understand that you don't have to ever get to that stage. You can literally stay where you are with your phone and still be winning. Yeah, that is so true. So another thing I was going to bring up here is everybody wants a VA. So yes. one of the things we are doing right now is we have a, a course called I Love Content. And we, we run it about every other month because book people, it's almost like this huge block. They won't do content. Yes. They won't create content. And they, they're, you know, we're just starting to teach authors that they, they must have it to build the audience and build trust. Yeah. So um, while well, this is one of the easiest ways, you guys, to get the content out there, but one of the things that happened in our course this time was we had a whole section at the end on passing this off to a VA mm -hmm. because every good solopreneur knows that you need to figure out what your zone of genius is and stay in it. And for yeah. most of the solopreneurs, it's like, how do I get clients and how do I close the deal? So this becomes sort of superfluous. So with that said, should they learn how to do all this themselves and then be able to pass it off to a VA? Yes. I held my breath on that one because that is a big yes. So <laughs> anything that you do in your business is always a good starting point for you to make sure you know what the process is like. You've experienced it. You know it. You know, I come from when I first started my business, I started with web design and making sure that clients knew how to update their website if they wanted to, to prevent them from getting screwed over by other people later down the line. I did that. Yes. Yes. Because it's the wild, wild west out here on the internet. And so it's always good to have a basic idea, whether you're going to continue to do it yourself or outsource it, a basic idea of what that process looks like and 
That way you can always make sure one, you have your finger on the pulse, but two, you, you have an idea of what people should be working on and, and what they should be charging and, and invoicing you. And so when we talk about video specifically, this is the beauty of video. You can outsource every other task pretty much in your business, except video because, and, and technically you could, but I, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't. Because if you just focused on creating video content, then you can send that video content to that VA who can then create your social media posts, whether it's video, audio, or text or, mm -hmm. or images. Um, you can also send that to whoever's running your ads or whoever is requesting XYZ from you. See, you have all these people on your team that are asking for something from you. And if you can give them one video clip, because they can do so much with that one video clip, and it makes your life so much easier. So once you get comfortable with being on video and you start consistently showing up on video, it's so much easier for the rest of your team, VA, contractors, whoever, to just pull from that and be able to do their job a lot easier and a lot smoother without having to go back and forth with you all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. It is. So I'm going to give you an example of what he's talking about, you guys. What we're recording right now, this is my podcast. So it gets created into a podcast. I think it goes on 21 different platforms. The video goes over, it's edited and it goes over on YouTube. I don't ever, I don't even know how to get into my YouTube channel. Although wait a minute, I guess I do now because we've been doing the coursework and putting it over there. So I know I how to it. log in, but I never really touch it. Yeah. It gets transcribed into yes. a blog. And typically if you talk over 20 minutes on a video and have it transcribed, it'll come out to over 6,000 words, which means the search engines are, in, are indexing it now. And it's on your website. So it's creating SEO. Yes. Um, your staff can take clips out of it. So we, we actually transcribe some of the articles and have them rewritten for the magazine. Oh, we have social media posts. We have snippets, audiograms taken out of it. I mean, there are so many things that we do with one recording like this that it's unbelievable. And guess what? It takes pressure off me having to create content more than once a week. Yes. And that's the beauty. And for so many who are listening, you've probably felt, if, if not still feeling, the pressure and the stress of having to always create content and post on social media 24 seven. Well, you don't have to, you can do one right. video per week and have that dedicated time if you have the right strategy in place and be able to then allow that one video to throughout the week work for you mm -hmm. in all those different areas. And I love that you're doing that with this podcast and that you shared that example because it opens up the doors for people to see all the possibilities. And again, for those listening, you don't have to do all those things at once. You may not do any of those things later on down the line. Just pick one thing that you can start with and get those reps in. It's all about building up that muscle memory and then being able to expand once you get to that next level. Yes, that is so true. So uh, just to share with you guys a little bit about what we're doing in the I Love Content, which you'll appreciate. Yeah. Hashtags, keywords. How do we, how do, we do put together a content calendar? These are things that I found with my book people that not only did they not have content, they didn't know how to do any of these things. So now we just took care of two of the things that you need to have together to build your author platform. Yes. So, yeah. So if you can start something as easy as what Ed is talking about on video with your phone, just put your phone on a, on a, a, a tripod. Yep. I actually use Zoom a lot too. I open up and I just use Zoom and talk. So if you can start doing that consistently and before you say another word, Ed, just agree with me. Before, don't critique yourself when you're doing it because there's oh, yeah. nobody who is your worst enemy more than you when it comes to video, right? It is so true. It's so true. And I will tell you, 
uh, you know, uh, here's a little secret for everyone is if you're going to watch your replays, which, which I do encourage you to at some point, know that you are not going to do it right away. That's the key because like you said, we're our worst critics and we'll film something, we'll watch it. And then we just tear ourselves down. You got to give it some time, let some time pass. I usually recommend at least a day to then go back and look at it and have an open mind because almost nine and a half times out of 10, you were not as bad as you thought you were in that moment. It's just human nature. And when you go back to watch those replays, you, yes, you'll catch some things, especially in the beginning days, because you're really keeping an eye on it, which is good because you're aware and that helps your brain understand, okay, we're going to make a mental note and we're going to fix that next time. We're going to work on that. But you also get to see, yeah, I'm not that bad. Actually, <laughs> have myself on the back. I did that, you know? And like, like you said earlier, you saw what other, what happened to other people where the mic had dropped on a Periscope video. And you were like, I'm a rock star. And so <laughs> it, again, it's that positivity that we're trying to promote and it's going to be through video and being able to get more comfortable with yourself and the camera. And it will open up so many doors to endless possibilities for you and your business. So true. So I'm going to give you guys a little hint here. If you're thinking that you're going to record this and maybe just use the audio Yesterday, I had the most amazing conversation with a client who complained about a different coaching program. And he said, it bothers me because everything they do is audio only. And I'm actually taking a course from those people right now. And I had the same experience. But here's the deal. The video, what he was saying is, I love working with you because I can see your face. I can tell you're telling me the truth. I can see your passion. I can see your eye contact. So if you're thinking, oh, I just don't want to see myself on video. I just want to hear the audio. Scrap that idea. You need yes. the video. Oh, I love that you brought that up because so many people will ask, can I not show my face on camera? Listen, you don't have to show your face on camera. However, if you want to run your business and make it sustainable and get seen out there, you have to show your business, your face because it, your business depends on it. It is so important. We do business with people we know, like, and trust. And we can only do that if we see your face, not a logo, not a stock image, your face. And I mean, right now, if you're listening to this, go watch the video because you can see how I light up and how goofy I might look on camera, <laughs> but I don't care because I am passionate about this and I love being able to see people embrace the camera. You know, I had, speaking of real estate agents, I had one of my agents who feared being on camera. She, she was doing it, but she just was not comfortable. And it took us uh, quite a few sessions before she finally started to record some videos. Now, she is a machine. She is putting out TikToks left and right. And she's <laughs> smiling and she's having a good time. And I just, I can't get enough. It's just like so cool to see how that door just swung right open. And mm -hmm. her, she's getting clients and she's having fun and she's creating content. Like all these boxes are getting checked, but they also feel right and, and feel really good to be checking those boxes versus well, I recorded a video, so check. No, you, you got to really put your, your focus on it and understand that you're going to be in it for the long run. It's not just, I recorded a video and nothing happened. Well, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. just about the video today. It has a long shelf life. That's In fact, it's longer than any of those social media posts that you've been putting out there. Video has a longer shelf life, especially when you put it on, like you said, YouTube, in your blog. Like, these are things that people are going to continuously come across. And so it's really important that you embrace it, even if it doesn't feel just right for you yet. I guarantee you, once you get over that fear and once you start working on that mindset part, it will come a whole lot easier and you too will start opening up more on camera.
Yeah. And here's the thing with video too. It's sort of like books and podcasts. If you find one you like, you'll go seek and listen to the others or read the other books yeah. or listen to the other podcasts. So even though you may not get that instant gratification today, there may be someone who sees one, you know, six, seven months from now and goes, I really like that information. I think I'm going to go back and look at everything else. So I've, so, I've even had that for two years. Like somebody yeah. found my video from two years prior and wanted to work with me. Like, yeah, that's the beauty. And, and real quick, you mentioned about scripts earlier when we were talking about being in a studio, right? As authors, what's beautiful is you already have your outline. You have your content. Video is just bringing it to life. It's not like you have to read the chapters or anything, but you might want to read an excerpt out of there and say, Hey, this is the title. You know, you can give little snippets. So it's not like you even have to think about what to talk about. You have it literally in your hands. Or not, on a not, <laughs> not only that, we had a client, Meryl, who actually would go out during the summer in his hammock at lunch and read a chapter yes. on Facebook Live. The first time I saw that, I died laughing. I'm like, your mother goose yeah. reading financial books. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. It's like, you're able to just do what you love, share it, and then you s start attracting the people that are wanting to be around that, that environment, that world that you've created. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go back just for a minute before we wrap up. For you real estate agents, if there are any listening, and I know I do have a few, the other thing about video, and this has happened to me, as an agent, you get your picture taken, and then you don't for another 10 years. And then it's yes. all over your ads and it's all over your business card and people walk up and there's nothing that is less of a trust builder than this person in front of me doesn't align with I just saw over there. So yes. video keeps people updated on what you look like too. And I actually remember that happening to me and probably this agent hadn't had her picture taken in 20 years. And I was like, damn, she's old. <laughs> But you bring up such a great point. And when you said 10, I was like, well, it's probably more like 20 for yeah. most people, but you know, and, and that's the thing. Again, I know probably people who are listening right now, they're like, oh, geez. And they're the, that's another weight on their shoulder. Right. But again, it's about that video positivity and promoting who you are. Listen, even I had to do that too, where I had to get comfortable with seeing myself on camera and understanding like, this is who I am. This is what you get here as well as if we met on the street, you know, by passing or at the coffee shop, like it's the same person. And that is good because you want to have that trust and you want to have that familiarity. Remember, it's like as many touch points in your business uh, that you're doing with follow-ups and connecting and all of these things, it's the same idea. You want to be consistent and you don't want to have that huge, like what, uh, you're the person I've been talking to, like, because then that has that trust broken and it's hard to get that back. So embrace who you are, wear something that's comfortable, put on something that feels comfortable for you, whether that's uh, lipstick, lip gloss, hair, nails, jewelry, find what it is and wear that. And, and if it's something that, you know, I used to have an old t-shirt that had holes in it that I would wear underneath a nice dress shirt just to feel comfortable, like whatever works, right? As long as you're comfortable and you get in front of that camera, everything else can just start to flow. Exactly. So Ed, where do we find you if we wanna, if we wanna reach out and talk to you some more? Yeah, definitely, please do. Uh, my website, edtroxel.com. There's a little chat in the lower right-hand corner, pretty much on every page that you can connect with me. Video, ideally, or you can do audio or even just a regular text message. But yeah, message me. Let me know how you found me, that you heard this, and let's get you connected with some resources so that way you can take the next step in your video journey and be part of that video positivity movement we've been talking about. Great. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you.